nothing but I never grind other things in this mill. This is about a gallon in here. So it takes a gallon each mill. And a baking, like today's baking, four gallons of sourdough and three gallons of, of sprouted berries. That's the proportion. So oh. that's one baking. It's a small baking. I'm a war child, Second World War. Grew up in that war and when I was 10 years old we became refugees. And then we lived as refugees. That's my basic education, I think, to be running from the bombs and the war and be a refugee and learn Cleaning the fields and grinding the grain and making the bread and such things. This year was the first year where I put milling as a job for the interns, as a daily chore. Other than that, I've done this on my own, mostly. And I was influenced by my refugeedom years in the countryside, in northern Germany, on the Danish border, on the Baltic Sea. And we had to, for a few years, we had to live wild, strange, and like no outside restraining us. So we, as kids, we were just roaming and just trying to still our hunger to collect things and to eat. And that was a major item in that. So that country life for me became what real life is. A city life is a sort of an imitation of life. I never wanted to be in the city. Okay, that's how long it takes for one mill. That's the business of grinding. Well, I made the uh, loaves at 4.30, so they were finished at 5, so they were resting till, uh, till they go in the oven. So it's about three and a half hours. And the fire is going for an hour and a little bit now. And the fire has to go hour and a half at least. So the, the sitting of the embers has to be a good, good vibe. So I have done that quite enough embers. I'm going to look for some more small sticks. And this is my favorite wood. Spruce is by far the best baking wood. It's hot, fast enough, not too hot, like maple is too hot. Each bird so too hot. Often I'm when I want something really hot, I put a stick of apple wood in. How many loaves are you going to make? Five. And will that be for uh, this week? today and tomorrow, if I'm lucky, I guess. It's over 100, 120 people in the meal. Oh. Close to that. Hard to keep up. So Akka was thinking she wanted the whole process and she said, well, let her come at four in the morning, right? And then, but I'm doing the same thing then, only for an hour. I'm doing it now for five minutes. <laughs> Thank you.
Could you talk about the stamp? That's from the old habit of communal baking that we experienced in southern Germany when we were refugees. And they had a, lived in a kind of a feudal, old-fashioned village where baking was done in one big oven. Everybody and every family had a different size. That's a wake. The other thing is a peel that I pull it out with. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, the coffee hocus pocus. It takes a lot of preparation. I'm soaking rye berries for two days. So, two, three gallons of the batter are uh, soaked, sprouted rye berries. Then the, the rest of it is sourdough and wheat. The wheat gets in at, in the morning. All the other stuff gets mixed the night before already. The salt and the wheat go in in the morning. And they are the ones who are fickle. They can't be in there too long, so you can't do it the night before. You have to do it so that the maximum time from dough kneading till oven is four hours. If you do it longer than that, the sourdough will break down the rising bubbles. The ones that are spotting, they need washing. I have to tend to the sourdough every day. But the whole baking through, it's, it's, it's every day, uh, at least two times, three times, different kinds of mixings. You know, it's not it's not just morning and evening. It's, that's the timing of the whole thing. Whereas with the, the black bread, you don't have this fickle yeah. behavior. You make the dough the night before. You knead it one more time before you make the loaves. Cast it in in the morning. Sourdough is fickle with weather. When, when you get thunderstormy, muddy weather like this, it wants to run away from you. So you have to slow it down with cold water, you have to slow it down with making the mixture thicker. All kind of things that then affect the baking. The bakery is a bakery. It doesn't want to be anything else. Yeah. Maybe puppetry. <laughs> the fold, what comes off your hand, everything gets made into the next dough. In addition to that, there's a five-gallon bucket of sourdough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm going to go and wash the berries and enlarge the sourdough. I'm so sorry, my mind had you. So I have a little more than a third of berries in there. You create a gallon of sprouts. So it's quite a volume increase. And weight increase because all that water is so quick. It starts sprouting now. By tonight they will be sprouting. <laughs> this can stay for a while now. The oven is cooled down enough, mm. the backside won't burn anymore. Pain it here, so it's not endangering. It's, it's good for the big loaves to get more time. Usually, I take the smaller loaves out. Uh, earlier, 
I leave it in for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and that results in putting wood in for the next packing. That's how it goes. Okay, very good. Well, um, the job that's left to do is to eat it. at some point? We used to have for the rye bread when it was drier, when it's, ah, when yeah. it's a few days old, then you can use a German circular slicer. Yeah. That's what we used to have. Circular slicer, there were about five or six of them in the bread house. Oh, wow. So uh -huh. Yeah, that's fine, but it doesn't work on this kind of bread. Yeah, on this is too moist. On, yeah. on cured bread. Mm -hmm. And this bread doesn't cure so much. The oh. rye, the pure rye cures much. Yeah. It's good for about a week, but it's fresh, really. That's its best. So, who are the all of the 120 people who are here? 20 interns, at least 25 staff. Oh, I'm like that. Wow. How does that? Affect you when you're. Oh, quality of bacon. Not too often. Yeah. Just as fast as I can get the What about in terms of your peace of mind? When bacon is about a peaceful and good thing. Yeah. Yeah. My peace of mind is okay as far as I'm baking. Uh huh. <laughs>
your interest in to do that Sunday thing, it's very different again in the big oven, you know. This kind of mass production attitude, you know, really fast work and the oven loses heat while you put it in badly. So mm. you have to be really fast with this other thing. Mm. So two of all these ovens, you, know, you bring them to their prime heat and then you want to act really fast to not lose that wonderful heat. Now is the biggest crowd. I try to do big breaking. Okay, good. Hold out the bottom. Mm -hmm. Try to get it to the tube again. Mm -hmm. And now we got it. Okay. It holds the heat after the fire is out for yeah. the whole day. You could cook many things there all day long. You yeah. have to get the original fire started only at 7 o'clock. It's only going for an hour, so you have to add at a certain point. The bigger pieces have to be uh, supported by kindling to set them ablaze again. That's what we did right now. Okay, so I would say we make Five trays of big loaves, the length of this, mm -hmm. not too fat, maybe three per thing, and then we do small loaves for give away some stuff. This is served here in the bread after the bread. So now, at, I think that's the last big one there. So this baking, do you, you don't turn the loaves in halfway through? I don't think I do. No, it's too, too much milk. Yeah. <laughs> too many loaves. Delinquent baker <laughs> got caught by Eddie. Couldn't get away. Oh my god. It's good. It smells good. That which smells good is good. I must say that in the Bible somewhere. Oh. 
kids are getting something that's a little harder than what they used to. <laughs> Ready and fire, that's it. Okay. Baking all done. This is the only hand lathe that's built by Jack Sumber. It's well built. It's, it's hard for one. Uh -huh. All the others, when you during the summer, they develop splinters. So you run the yeah. thing so quickly to your hand and you end up with a giant splinter. Because yeah. they're pine. It helps to know your woods. Sacrament. It unifies the crowd, it tastes really good, it's old grain, it has an old world taste. It feels unified and delicious. There's a huge lion, we just gotta keep cutting. I think it's delicious. Brings everybody to the same table. Yeah. This is really yeah. superior Peter Schumann bread. It's an especially good batch. The topping is wonderful too. We're all hungry. It's, uh, it's good. Aioli. So we started making aioli and imitating what people do in the Provence. I learned to know it in the in the grape harvest in the Provence in which I worked, and they made aioli diligently every day for all the people who worked in the great harvest. Mm. They put a big bowl of that aioli in the middle of the table and they had bread and wine and that was the meal. And you stipped your hunk of bread into the aioli and you ate and that was what they fed you. Mm -hmm. And that aioli is a typical southern French aioli made of garlic and homemade mayonnaise. So you start with the mayonnaise part, you take egg yolks and blend oil into it and then you mash the garlic separately and then you melt both of it together and they also put lemon into it which turns it pretty white. Mm -hmm. When we did the big resurrection circuses, we first started using that Provencal recipe 
and then more and more we got afraid of uh, what will happen on a really hot day with all those egg yolks. Mm. So we stopped it and we replaced it with Catalan style aioli. Garlic melted into oil, olive oil and then you green it with either parsley or other greenery. All green paint is good. <laughs> this is what it means to me. Here we go. <laughs> Better. Mm. Yeah, the people are happy. <laughs> my hands are full of wonderful, delicious aioli, and I think I might have to lick my fingers. Old habit was that you take a piece of bread, you have very good food, you swing it on, on, while well, these couple of hundred people are waiting, they put it on, say, please, and then say thank you, and they take the next piece. <laughs> now we just put the bread on trays, take a spoon, <laughs> Yeah, but people still say thank you, I noticed that. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It's amazing to me that very young, almost baby-like kids, like Ira, when he was very young, he just eats it. Hmm. And so do many baby yeah. kids. I think it's a combination of the bread and aioli that they like. Mm -hmm. If you would give it to them on some other substance, I'm not so sure that they would like the taste of this very strong garlic. This one gets very hot. This one gets extremely hot. I would say seven, eight hundred easily or something. Or even more. Mm -hmm. You know, like pizza, a thousand probably. Wow. And the ambassador. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's a it's a fast declining heat. Uh -huh. So I'll probably bake at four hundred, the medium of, of the time. And yet when I bake at four fifty in these very good commercial ovens we have on the farm. Then I have leftover dough that I can't fit in the oven. Then I bake in the theater oven, with big range. Mm -hmm. And when the loaves come out, they look pitiful compared to the ones that come from it. They look like the drive children oh. that were undernourished. <laughs> They didn't get any sunshine. Oh, that's very sad. <laughs> they look sad. Oh. They can't oh compare. This is all right with almost half of its sprouts between a third and half. So it's a very loose feather. Mm -hmm. It will be hard to slice it for a couple of days. At least some, some innovation in a uh -huh. few years. <laughs> now this is the Silesian peasant bread mm -hmm. that I learned to bake from my mother. Mm -hmm. That we originally used only, only that. Sure. And one year we went to China. I couldn't find any why. But I told them I'm going to bake and they gave me bricks and all that to build them. Uh -huh. But they couldn't find any why. And <laughs> that's when I was forced to learn wheat baking. But I know that the Mongolians eat white bread. Oh, yeah. I know it's in Asia. Mm -hmm. It grows because why grows in poor soils. Uh -huh. And way up in the Alps, wheat needs much better soils. I want to bake more pumpernickel. What makes it pumpernickel? Um, yeah. the, the long baking, the long, slow 10 baking. hour baking, slow, oh. with very light temperature, under 200. It sweetens the wine, so yeah. naturally when you bake something long and slow, yeah. it sweetens it. This is pure rye. Pure rye, but baked differently. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Emily Dickinson. 
Success is counted sweetest by those who ne'er succeed. To comprehend a nectar requires sorest need. Not one of all the purple host who took the flag today can tell the definition so clear of victory as he defeated, dying, on whose forbidden ear the distant strains of triumph burst agonized and clear. Well, but see, Gordon Poppard, I would say, we have not degenerated into success yet. <laughs> When we were young, we read giant books to each other. That's part of baking. Now I will have to run to check the fire. to myself, oh, Tannebaum, oh, Tannebaum. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's in my head and I can't get rid of it. The Lehrer hat mich vollgehauen. Da muss ich in der Ecke stehen. Hat mir die kühle Wand besehen. So, die kalte Wand. Oh, Tannebaum, oh, Tannebaum. Der Lehrer hat mich vollgehauen. If you sing as a student in Germany, because they beat you. The Lehrer had me blau gehauen. Oh. That's a good beating. Huh. Blau gehauen. Tell me, tell me, the green are your blätter. Yeah. The green is not only for summer time, but also in winter when it snows. The not only green in the summer time, but also in winter when it snows. Do you often sing when you're baking? Yeah, I think I do. Uh -huh. It's an obsession. I can't get rid of it. Remember last time? Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> And there was a certain coffee magic to it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. All right. In half an hour, I'll turn them. Uh -huh. I'll take them out and turn, if necessary. Sometimes the front makes the front from the yeah. back. Mm -hmm. But this is small load. I mean, only a little more than half a load. Normally, I do twice as many. But oh. I mean, that's when puppeteers are here right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No need for so much bread. We call that Munkelfunkel in German. Munkelfunkel. <laughs> 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 we heat mean? the coffee and put the milk in. That means nothing. Oh. <laughs> Even the children were allowed to drink Munkelfunkel. Oh. But in the war, that's only. When we were kids, the coffee wasn't coffee. It was acorn mm. mixed with barley. Oh. That was the coffee. The theater is just the vehicle for the bread. It's not the other way around. Mm. There, there has to be a method of getting people to of <laughs> distributing the bread. If you have free bread, it's very suspicious for mm. Americans. They can't do that. That's not part of the culture.
So in order to do that, you have to trick them.